If you are a coach, a consultant, or any other service professional that delivers results for clients, then this video is gonna be one that you're gonna to wanna to watch and come back to over and over. Because in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the question of whether you can or should guarantee client results. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is because this is something that I've noticed in the clients I work with has been coming up as a little bit of an issue. And it's an issue that can really affect your mind when you're selling. Because ultimately, it's really important that you believe in what you're selling. And so if there's any doubt in your mind about the ability of your program or your offering to generate results for your clients, then that is actually going to become an obstacle when selling. At the other extreme, I have people that are fearful about making bold promises and they're basically getting overlooked in the marketplace because they are afraid of making a promise that they might not be able to deliver on or that the client can't achieve that end result. And so because of that, their marketing and their offers become quite wishy-washy and they're not standing out in the marketplace at all. First of all, let's look at like, why is it important to be thinking about your client results? Well, I, I'm gonna assume the first thing is because you care. <laughs> I know that one thing that all of the people that are either paying clients of mine or in my community, in my Facebook group, my, my YouTube followers, on my email list. One thing I know that you all have in common is that they do care about making a difference. And I'm sure you're no exception. You're not just in this for the money. You genuinely want to help people. I know the business I started was very much a calling when I met someone that was really struggling to get his therapy business off the ground. And I knew that I could help him. And that was basically my desire. That was why I wanted to step up and create something to assist people getting more clients. And I'm sure you're no different. You want to have people get results. Now, apart from you being a really nice person, who cares? There is a business reason because when you have a program or an offering that is getting results for people, then that affects your branding, that affects your positioning in the marketplace, that affects your reputation. Clients getting results is something that will ensure you have a steady stream of word of mouth inquiries and referrals. So it's going to be great business for you. At the other extreme, clients who don't get the results they expected or they believe they've paid for are bad for business. And these days that could mean negative online reviews or just like a general kind of bad feeling or a lot of customer service time taking up trying to fix issues that have come up. Now, now, what can also happen, and I'm not saying this is a good reason, but it's one that I've observed, is that you as the practitioner or the provider, it could be that you are looking for validation. So if you have a process that you're confident has worked, either because it's something that you've developed for yourself or you've already shared with some clients, but you, you're not really solid on that, there's a very good chance that you're looking for that proof to come from your clients. I know I did. When I first started my business, teaching people how to become client magnets, I know that I was looking for them to get results because I wanted that proof of like, yes, this really does work. Even though I've used it and the people I'd shared with it, I'd seen results with them. Um, I wanted to make sure that more people were getting results. And with one of my first offerings, when that wasn't happening, that really dented my confidence. The thing here, the point I'm making is if your clients aren't getting results, that can really mess with your confidence and your belief. It's hard to sell something that you don't believe in. And so even though you might go, well, I know this works, but this happened with a client of mine recently. He had people who were signing up for his program, but they weren't following his instructions they weren't actually doing the work. And so he ended up having a whole lot of doubts in his mind, even though he knew that this process worked, he just hadn't figured out how to get people to follow the process. What this means is, you know, it will stop you from making bold promises if you've got doubts about your program. So this is absolutely something that you want to clean up when you are making promises in the marketplace, when you're making offers, when you are offering people some type of transformation, it's really important that you know what you can guarantee, what you can't guarantee and where you stand. Basically, I think everything that we experience in life, we can put down into one of three boxes. There are things that we can control, there are things that we can influence, and there are things that we can do nothing about. You can use your own term for that. Anyway, those are the three boxes. Which box does client results fit into? As my client found out, he could control having clear instructions and he could control, you know, how well he mapped out the stages and the steps. So he could control that, but he couldn't control whether or not his clients follow those 
those instructions. Like they're another human being. They have free will. They were able to decide for themselves whether they followed his instructions or not. He came to me because he was quite frustrated because he's like, I know this works, but I've got all these people and they're just not doing what they're supposed to do. Help me fix this. And I said, well, what you need to realize is that this isn't something that's totally out of your control. Having your clients follow your instructions is something that you can influence. And actually you can see the clients in your program who you perceive aren't getting results right now, you can actually see that as some type of feedback for you on their actual pieces that need to be added in. And I found this myself with my early programs. My early programs teaching people how to get clients, I focused on just three things. It's like get clear on who your audience is, get them to raise their hand and then convert their hand into paying business. So it was very much like practical here are the action steps. But what I learned as I took more and more people through this process, now tens of thousands of people that I've taken through this process, what I learned is, although the instructions are quite simple, also sorts of things can get in the way. So for example, with some of my clients, uh, one of the things that came up was their doubts about whether they really had something valuable to offer. Another common one was converting interest into paying business was a lot of fears around selling and what it meant to sell. And would that make them pushy or were, were they being manipulative if they sold? And so these were things that I hadn't considered when I was developing this process. But as clients started coming through, I started to realize, ah, here are the places where people get stuck. Here are the places places where the, the instruction isn't clear. So this is why I urge you to do. If you're in a situation where you have clients coming through your processes and they're not at the level of 100% of your clients getting results, rather than make you wrong or rather than make them wrong, what if you just adopted a position of compassionate curiosity and just like, okay, so I wonder what can I do here to help the process? And one of the questions that I ask myself anytime I'm creating a program is what do I have to include to make my client's success inevitable? So because of that question, my own programs have evolved to an hour where we have accountability. We give people clear steps of things that they need to do every day. And if they're not doing those things, we don't whip them or, you know, publicly shame them. We get curious and go, right, what's coming up for you? What's stopping you? This is data. This is data that we can work with and we can figure out what exactly you need to go and implement this. We're not going to make you wrong. We're not going to make the program wrong. We're going to figure this out together. And so if you adopt the same attitude with your clients, every client who comes through your programs can be a client who teaches you something. Every single person who goes through your program will help you to make your program better and stronger. And it has to start with your commitment to client results. Now, when it comes to client results, there are basically three different camps that you can fall into. And these camps are complacent, committed, or attached. So let me explain what I mean by each. If you're in the camp of being complacent about your client results, you will have the attitude of, well, you know what? It's not up to me. I've done everything I can. I've given them all the instructions. It's over to them. And, you know, if they're not going to do it, it's not my problem. It's kind of the attitude of, well, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them uh, drink. Now, in the short term, that may make, make you feel better. That may make you feel that you don't have to deal with the fact that you have clients that aren't getting results, but that is not going to serve you in the long term in business. That is not an attitude for creating long term success in your business. The better attitude is to be committed. And this is where you're showing up with 100% commitment to your client results, knowing that you're responsible to them, you're not responsible for them. So you have a commitment to your client results, and you also know that you can't work harder for their success than they do. And this is the attitude. If you pair this attitude with constantly asking the question, what has to happen to make my client's success inevitable? It will lead you to solutions and it will lead you to improvements in your offerings that will continually serve your clients and help more and more clients get better and better results. Now, the final area that sometimes people fall into is where you're attached to client results. And it's this is where you need your client to get results because you're looking for the validation. You need your clients to get better results because you want the proof. You want to feel better about yourself. And so if you're attached to client results, you want to look out for that also because there's a difference between being committed and attached. If you're attached to client results, it will feel really bad if clients aren't getting results because you'll make that mean something about you. Now, notice if you're attached to your clients getting results, you're not able to serve them either. It's like you're going to get frustrated with them. You're going to get irritated on them. You might judge them for not getting their results. They will pick up on that. And then you are not creating a safe space in your programs 
for true transformation to happen. So it's important to be checking in regularly of like, well, where am I right now? Where am I in client results? Am I complacent? Am I committed? Am I attached? I know on my own business journey, I've been in all three of those camps at different times. So it's important to check in and notice where you are. But the place, if you really want to have success in your business, if you want a business that's making impact, that's serving people that making a difference, is for you to show up with 100% commitment to your client results. When you committed, you know you're bringing your best game and you're expecting your clients to bring theirs. And if they don't, there's no need to judge them or even judge the process. You can always find places to improve and optimize what you're doing and the journey that you take your clients on. And when you're committed, you know that you're bringing your best game and you expect your clients to bring theirs. If they don't, there's no need to judge them But when you get curious about what's preventing them from showing up 100%, that could lead to some huge improvements in your offering as you help them pass an obstacle that others in your industry are ignoring. So I hope this has helped you as you're thinking about helping your clients to get results in your business. I'd love to know what you think about this. Do leave a comment below and tell me, like, what have you observed through this video? Where are you in relation to client results? Were you in the camp of complacent, committed or attached? And what changes are you going to make as a result of watching this video? I'd love to hear your comments. They inspire me to come up with new content for you. So do leave them below and I'll see you next time. Mm